Okay, so today we have Google Classroom tools that integrate and excite. If you have any questions about anything presented in today's webinar, I'm Carla Kuiper, EBR Instructional Technology Facilitator. My email is kkuiper11 at ebrschools.org and I'm a Google for Education Certified Trainer. This webinar is with one CLU, so please sign in with your name and if you also use your email, it helps me to identify you so that I can um, provide you with credit in ERO. This webcast is being recorded and this slide deck will be shared with everyone. Please feel free to use the chat tools to ask a question live and if you would mute your microphone if you have one connected, I would appreciate it. Thanks. If for any reason you lose my audio broadcast today, you can also dial in using your phone and the number is on the screen at this time. The access code is also there and I will put those in the chat box. To make it a lot easier in case you have to call in. Okay, today's slide deck, if you're interested, is going to be located at the, at the following tiny URL. So it's at tinyurl.com, EBR Integrate. And I'll pause for a moment and give you an opportunity to browse over to the URL and grab today's slide deck. Okay, so what does Google Classroom integration mean? Well, Google Classroom is, has a wonderful resource. All right, uh, announcements are coming on, so I'll be muting myself for just a minute or two in just a moment. So Google Classroom integration, as I was mentioning before, means that you're able to sign into a resource with your Google login. So the resources I'm going to present are all um, basically going to feature that as one of their main um, benefits. You'll be able to sign in with your district Google account. You won't need to create any kind of a new login, which is a big help because once um, you begin to use and integrate a lot of different programs, you end up with a lot of different logins and passwords and URLs and links, and it all begins to become very daunting to keep up with it. So Google has been reaching out to many um, technology integration partners and creating um, integrations so that you don't have to create all of these new accounts. The other benefit of integrating the tools that I'm going to present today into your Google Classroom is that you don't need to create a new class and in some cases you don't have to create student logins. In some cases I'll show you tools and resources that will allow you to post assignments directly to your Google Classroom stream. And let me give you that hyperlink. Hang on. Okay. Okay, so the hyperlink to the today's Google Slide Deck is now in the chat, so please feel free to um, grab that link and let me know if for any reason you're unable to grab today's slides. Alright, so the first resource that I'd like to share today is the Gale Student Resources in Context. And it's an awesome program. It is a district purchase resource, so it's available through library services. And this tool really helps to multiply the power of your Google Classroom because it's a fairly extensive database of full text articles. And these are really high quality articles. Um, many of them are informational. 
and they cover a wide variety of topics. And as you can see, if you just look at the top of the screen, you can automatically see that um, you can log in with your, let me make the screen a little larger. You can log in with your Google account. You can also sign in with Microsoft and you can begin to share resources almost immediately to your Google Classroom. So what that means is that when you pull an article Okay, so here's a, a wonderful article on Langston Hughes. I can hit the Share to Classroom button and it goes immediately to my Google Classroom and it begins to search for a class. And it may take a moment because my connection could be moving a little slowly. I'm going to hit that button one more time. All right. I can hit the Share to Classroom button, and here it comes. I can choose a Google Classroom. And then choose an action, so I can create an assignment or maybe make an announcement about this article or this resource page and hit go and it will allow me to set up an assignment within Google Classroom uh, without having to go into Google Classroom, find the hyperlink, copy the hyperlink, paste it into Google Classroom. Um, if I go ahead and fill out all the assignment information here in Google Classroom, my students in this classroom will be able to go right in and this assignment will be waiting for them. I could also add in other directions, videos, and so on. So there are um, a variety of tools available within the Gale um, Student Resources and Context page. As you can see, there are citation tools. Students can highlight and annotate. They can bookmark articles. So um, it's a wonderful um, digital tool that goes along with many of the skills and 21st century skills that we're trying to teach and reinforce with students in class. If you are looking for this resource from the EBR main site. If you go to ebrschools.org and then mouse over to parents, down to research, and you'll find this page along with a bunch of other research and, and uh, information-based tools um, provided by library services here in EBR. <clears throat> so that's the EBR main site parents and researchers right above the eye care if you just mouse over these links and look at each menu you'll see research and it's it gets a lot easier to find Okay, so the next resource that I'd like to share today is in the same vein as Gale Student Resources and Context is Discovery Education. So what is it? It's a lot more than videos. It used to be United Streaming and it was all about the videos, but now there are writing prompts, online tools, project boards, and much, much more available on Discovery Ed. Why do teachers use it? Because you can now sign in with your Google account, it shares to Google Classroom, and it's a district purchased resource. And there are also virtual field trips as well. So Discovery Ed, we go on over to the site. So I can now log in with my Google account. Let me log out and show you how that Google login works. So discovery and then logging in and I can sign in with my Google account so I don't have to keep creating all of these new usernames and all of these new passwords and keeping up with all of that. What I really love about Discovery Ed and what I th why I think Discovery Education adds value to your teaching is because it, they're constantly updating with new content. They're constantly posting either new opportunities, new events, and also virtual field trips. 
So there's a virtual field trip that will be on May 11th, and it will take students into the world of agriculture, and specifically STEM careers in agriculture. So if this is something that students in your class really need to be exposed to, and it really seems as if our students can't be exposed enough to careers and information about different careers, this might be a wonderful virtual field trip to take them on. You do have to register in advance. And if you click the register button, it will take you to a page that will allow you to sign up in advance. These are live field trips, so they actually take camera equipment into these um, companies and into all of these fascinating places and allow students to take the opportunity to see what it's like inside of um, a food science lab or a food marketing lab. The other virtual field trip here that I want to point out is Toyota of North America is going to invite students into their um, factory on April the 20th. So you can take students behind the scenes to see all about design, research, and development of automobiles. And there's a whole lot more here on Discovery Ed, and I want to make sure that you know that there's much, much more here than videos, but of course if you're coming to this site to check out videos, do know that they are standards aligned. You can search by curriculum standards and find the content that you need. Videos that you find in Discovery Education can be shared to Google Classroom as assignments. So when you pull up a video, for example, if you go over to the three dots for more and you hit share, one of your options is to share to Google Classroom. You can also copy that link and paste it into an assignment in Google Classroom, but you can share Google videos from Discovery Education right on into your Google Classroom. So again, it just kind of acts as a multiplier or adds an extra um, dimension to your Google Classroom when you can integrate these resources. The next tool I'd like to share is more of a middle and high school tool. It's called ClassCraft. And ClassCraft is kind of interesting because what it brings to the table is that it will take any set of assignments that you have, uh, that you create for your students, and turns it into a role-playing game, video game, specifically. And middle and high school teachers love this one. I've seen middle and high school teachers um, use this tool with great success. I've seen middle school teachers in our district at Southeast Middle School use this tool with great success. Um, it's a free web-based program. You can sign in with your Google account. It allows teachers to work in teachers and students to work in teams. I should say that both teachers and students can collaborate while in this platform. And there is a Chrome app. And um, you can also use your Google Classroom rosters. So that's ClassCraft. And what it does is that you post assignments and the students create their own avatar. And the set of assignments that you might create um, for the students act as sort of a mission or sort of an online quest that they have to complete to earn points. Students can earn points for completing assignments and they can also earn points in ClassCraft for things like finding mistakes, correctly answering questions in class. So everything in ClassCraft that you do with students does not necessarily have to be online. You can even give kids points in the ClassCraft classroom for things that they do offline as well. So it's a really interesting tool. And it syncs with your Google Classroom roster. So the next tool that I want to share is called Actively Learn, and Actively Learn is a digital reading platform that allows teachers to differentiate and scaffold reading instruction. It's primarily used by 4th through 12th grade teachers, but I could see where a pre-K to 3rd grade teacher might be able to use Actively Learn if they upload 
um, a good deal of their own content. Teachers love this tool because it's free. You can sign in with your Google account and you can also share to Google Classroom. You don't have to start from scratch on this platform. You can um, use many standards aligned resources that are already available. So when you go into um, actively learn and sign in, you're going to see in just a moment that I can log in with Google. So I, no need to create a brand new account. And the nice part about it is that you can go in, you can add content from the catalog. They have a large number of pre-made activities. These are aligned to standards. Or if you prefer, you can upload your own PDF documents. I can select something that's already been uploaded. And then what you get in the workspace is the opportunity to add things like questions. You can customize your assignment by highlighting notes for students. You can add annotations for students, or you can allow students to add the annotations. And you can even um, add formative assessment questions and add the DOK level and the standards to the formative assessment question. So Actively Learn is um, really a great tool. There are 25, over 2,500 pre-created assignments. You can import Google Docs. You can also import PDFs. And there is text-to-speech available. Again students and teachers working together, if students collaborate um, within Actively Learn, you can really set up um, a digital platform for students to read in and to uh, receive a lot of differentiated and scaffolded instruction. So that's actively learn, and it will sh again it will share your assignments to Google Classroom. In the same vein as um, actively learn is Newzilla or NewzLA. It's free. You can sign in with a Google account. I feel that that these are some great resources, and they use great sources for their articles. They use the AP, Washington Post, and National Geographic to provide kids with new articles each day that are timely and current and focused on current events, and they're also really high interest articles overall. The cool part about New ZLA articles, and I'm going to sign in with Google, so I don't have to type in a username or password or try to figure any of that out, because it's Google integrated. I can read this article at the 1010 Lexile level, or I could drop the Lexile level down for students to differentiate or to provide scaffolds for students who need that support. And I could drop it lower still. And you can see the word count changes as the Lexile levels change. The complexity of the sentences in the articles also changes as well. Each article that you um, pull up on New ZLA has a writing prompt and also a quiz. And it does share to Google Classroom. So it's a great resource to integrate into Google Classroom. That's newsela.com. Oh, and I did not mention that there are text sets available as well as Spanish text available in the News ELA articles. Okay, um, another news or current event focused tool that you can use. This one I think um, is also good. It's called Dogo News. It's free. Focuses on grades K through 8, current news and events, informational text, and the site is dogonews.com. 
So you can go in, you can search articles by grade level or by category. And again, these are high interest articles that incorporate um, informational text. And as you can see, you see the Google Classroom share icon, so you can view assignments, you can print them as worksheets, or you can add them to your digital classroom through Google Classroom. Yeah, I, I like the resource for um, ELs. Are you referring to Patricia's um, in the chat box? Are you referring to News ELA? Yeah, News ELA, definitely. We could jump back to that one for a second. Um, I almost forgot to mention that it's um, that Spanish text is available. I hope that as you um, go into classrooms, Patricia, that you're seeing uh, this resource being used by teachers because the um, the Spanish text is available. Okay, um, another resource, this one is a little bit different from the ones I've been presenting, it's called Quizlet. You can log into this one with your Google account, so it's Google account integrated, and there are millions of different study sets. It's kind of a flexible tool. And what it does, let me pull up uh, Quizlet. is that it will provide you with the tools to create flashcards, games, and much, much more. So it's Google Login integrated, no need to create an account or classes. And what it does is it allows you to create any study set that you would like. So, for example, it's great for vocabulary, terms, and definitions. Uh, many times uh, language teachers use this, ELA teachers use it to uh, allow kids to create study sets for vocabulary. You can import from Excel, Google Docs, or from Microsoft Word. And um, you can also search for resources that are available. So we could just pull up a topic like biology, and then we could start seeing all of the resources. So it's a community of teachers that are sharing resources online. So you can find um, pre-crafted materials. I think the best way to use Quizlet is to allow students to create the learning materials or the study tools and materials that they need. And there is a Chrome app available for the Chromebook Classroom. Another interesting tool that integrates with Google Classroom Google and your Google login is called GeoGebra. It's a website that provides teachers and students with math models and simulations. Teachers use it because you can sign in with Google, you can use the simulations that are provided, or you can make your own simulations. Let me close some things out. Okay, so this is GeoGebra, and you can see there's some really simple simulations that you can pull up as a manipulative in class or to work with students. And there are a variety of other tools and resources. Here's one on 3D, 3D geometry, and um, you can see it spans a variety of different grades. And the main idea here with this tool is just that it's a tool that will allow teachers to reach students um, who learn through a variety of different styles. So if a student is not getting it through the workbook or through the textbook, this is um, a resource that will allow them to manipulate and actually interact with the math concepts being taught. 
there is a program embedded within this website that will allow you to create your own simulations. I think that make an interesting challenge for students. The best way to use this resource when you're getting started is to look for things that are already created. So for example, um, here's a set of tangrams that allow students to complete some puzzles. So that's geogebra.org. Another resource that I really like um, is called Duolingo, and there is a Chrome app available for this one. It's very engaging. You can sign in with your Google account. And I'm, t I'm going to do a lingo through the um, commonsensemedia.org uh, website. And Common Sense doesn't give five stars to too many uh, different products. They do rate a lot of products. They're a nonprofit group that rates technology resources. And you can't pay to be on their website or to get a um, review from their website. They don't give out many five stars, but they give five stars to Duolingo because it teaches really um, well in terms of covering language learning skills and language tools, but it also makes it really fun. I've seen teachers in the district use this tool with a lot of success. So Duolingo.com, used both by teachers and also by students who are learning languages. Okay, next tool is CK12, and this is a standards-aligned STEM resource website. K-12 through teachers can use this. It's free. You can sign in with your Google account, and there is a really large database of activities that I'll take you to in just a moment. One of the more interesting things that you can do with CK12 is to create a custom textbook. And I am currently signed in to my account using my Google login. So they, there is a button you can sign in and sign, or even sign up with your Google account. And the first thing that you can do is go in, look for a set of standards, such as um, the Next Generation Science Standards or Common Core or State Standards. Select a subject, and then a grade level as well. And you'll see um, flex textbooks that are aligned to that grade level. You can also sit, just look for, um, for just tools and resources as well. So you don't have to um, pull up a textbook per se. I really like that there are simulations. So these are science-based. And again, the partnership with Google means that you don't have to, um, teachers don't have to create accounts. Students can also log in with Google. You don't have to create student accounts on this website to give kids access to this resource. So Google has really done a wonderful job in working with CK12 and all the other partners that I've been presenting to make it very accessible for students to be able to use these, these tools. All right, the next one that I like to share is called Edpuzzle. And Edpuzzle is an online tool that will let you create your own video content. Primarily, this tool gets used by teachers in grades three through 12, all content areas. And teachers use this because it's free. It lets you add comprehension questions to a video. There's a large number of pre-made activities, but if you don't find what you need, you can create your own and of course, sign in with Google. Students can also sign in with Google and assignments created can be shared to Google Classroom. So edpuzzle.com. And in a moment you'll see me log in as a, as a teacher with my Google account. So I'm in as a teacher and
what it allows me to do is take a video, and this is a video from the Nat Geo website, and add questions to it. So this is just a video, and questions have been added to it to make sure the, that students pay attention, it tracks attention, and it also tracks comprehension. And so it really helps to enhance those um, cognitive and behavioral skill sets that we want our students to begin to apply to digital media um, in terms of moving them away from just passively consuming and getting them to actively learn when they interact with digital media. Assignments created and Edpuzzle can be shared to Google Classroom, or you can just use a hyperlink to share with, with a class. All right, and the next resource that I'd like to talk about is called Nearpod. So nearpod.com is an immersive and interactive multimedia site, so it goes extends beyond video, and K-12 through teachers use it in all content areas. Teachers use Nearpod because you can create these interactive slideshows that allow you to add all kinds of multimedia, video, audio, and the best part is that you can also add assessment questions. The basic version of the program is free, and you can sign in with your Google account, and this one is a multiplier because you can share the assignments that you create in Nearpod to Google Classroom. So let me take you over to Nearpod. And as you can see, I'm going over to the right and I'm signing in with my Google account. If you go to Explore, you will find that there is a large library of pre crafted lessons. Some of them have a cost associated with them. Many of them are free and you can filter through Nearpod's content and find the subjects and um, grade levels that you're interested in and find the resources for that subject or for that grade level that are free. So I could say fifth grade ELA and only look for things that are free. Now the best part about these pre-crafted um, presentations are that you can add them to your library and then after you add them to your library you can go in, you can edit them and you can change them out. Nearpod lets you look at a preview of each presentation so that you can determine if this is something that you want to um, edit or if it's ready to go in your classroom. So it's all about using the dictionary and context clues, and I can go through all of the slides and determine if this is a resource that I can use. The best part about Nearpod, I think, is that when you go in and explore, is that there are virtual field trips in Nearpod. And some of them are even free. So there are some that have a cost associated with them. And there are some that are free. So you're looking at some of the free resources in Nearpod right now. If you have the virtual reality um, Google Cardboard devices and um, iPods in the classroom or smartphone device, you can get the full VR experience. It's hard to see um, or get the full immersive experience on a computer screen, but what students um, get from Nearpod is, is as if they get to be there without actually ever leaving the classroom. And of course, if they put on the VR headsets, then it's even better. So it's, a, it's astonishing that many of these presentations are available in Nearpod and they're totally free. And you can log in with your Google, class, um, your Google account and share um, the links to your Google Classroom. 
I've seen many teachers throughout the district using Nearpod with huge success because it is so engaging and it's so interactive. And so students get to interact with the teacher by answering different questions. This is an example of a question where students would type in their responses. And you can add things like polls. And so assessment really becomes fun when you present it in a format like this. And throughout this presentation, I hope that what I've been sharing with you is the, the need or um, inspiring you maybe to think about meeting all of your students' needs, those that are visual learners, those that learn verbally, those that learn kinesthetically. Um, these are tools that are going to meet your learners where they are and cover different learning styles. So Nearpod, amazing, nearpod.com. Okay, the next tool that I'd like to share in this kind of tech blitz is Edulastic. Now what's Edulastic? Edulastic is an online formative assessment toolkit for teachers. It can be used by teachers K through 12. The content though focuses mainly on ELA and math. I'm afraid to say you're not going to find too much if you're looking for science and social studies, but if you're an ELA or a math teacher, you'll find some great things here. You can sign in with Google Classroom. Um, you can do a share to Google Classroom. It is aligned to Engage New York. And um, there's an impressive database here of question types. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So this is edulastic.com. And if I go in and I start, um, let me go into my assessments. And let's pretend I'm going to create a new assessment. Okay, so the first thing I want you to notice is that there's a large number of questions pre-made that I can sift through and sort through and determine if these are questions that would meet um, my students' needs. The other cool part is that I can, um, let me scroll back up to the top. If you come over here to the question types, this is what I was talking about when I was saying there's an impressive array of question types that you can create here. So I can create my own question here and it can be passage based. It could be a drag and drop. I can pull up the fraction editor. It could be a graphing question, a line plot, matching, a number line question. I can't honestly say that I've seen more question styles that you can create in another online platform. So this is edulastic.com. So if you need all the basic question types plus you'd like technology enhanced questions, um, multi-part questions, I think this is a great tool to explore. All right, so the next one that I'm going to pull in is Go Formative. So along with Edulastic, another tool that multiplies the power of your Google Classroom and your Google Login is Go Formative. What Go Formative does is that it creates interactive formative assessments. It's used primarily by teachers in grades 3 through 12. There's a large database of teacher-created content. and it spans a variety of areas. But it, you can also create your own assessments in GoFormative if you prefer. So if you don't find what you need, go in and create your own. You can sign in using your Google login so you don't have to create a new account and students don't have to create new accounts in Formative either. So I can pull up um, an, uh, an assignment 
This one was pre-created. You have the option to create your own classes or you can set up a class code and um, share with Google Classroom as well. So when I go to share an assignment, I can um, share it using a direct link or I can give out a quick code as well. The one thing about creating assignments in GoFormative as opposed to Edulastic is that when you create questions in GoFormative, you are limited somewhat in terms of the question types. So you've got multiple choice, show your work, short answer, and true and false. Um, that show your work question is kind of a drawing question. You can upload content. So if you have a file with some images, you can add that into a GoFormative. All right, so that takes me through all of the tools that I'm going to share. Um, if you want to learn more about ways to integrate a lot of technology resources into Google Classroom and just to, in Google in general, um, make sure that you register for our G Suite for Education Spring Webinar Series. We're moving right along with Webinar Wednesday, and so today with Google Classroom tools that integrate next week, Go paperless with Google Drive and Docs, and then flipping instruction with Google Forms. So next week's webinar is posted, the time and the date. If you want to learn more about technology integration in general, right now is a great time to find a self-paced technology integration course. It's also a great time to look for some of the technology integration videos that are posted in the MAPS modules. And you can scroll through and look at the bottom of the page under additional instructional modules. You'll find educational technology as well as other content. And of course, grade level and content-based videos in the math modules. So if you have any questions about any of the tools that I've shown you today, get in touch with me. You can email me at kkuyper11 at ebrschools.org. Again, this webinar is worth one CLU, and you'll receive confirmation from ERO. If you have any questions, definitely let me know if there's one tool or more that you'd like to integrate with Google Classroom or that you'd like to use with your students, but you have more questions about it and you'd like to find out more. Send me um, a message or just type a question in the chat box. I'll be around for a little while longer, and any questions that you have, I'll be glad to answer. Thank <laughs> you.